Act like a tree. How's your mom? How are the kids? Did I lose any friends in the breakup? No. Two, three, fuck it. Welcome to Marche's Mirror. I'm Marche, and in today's video, I'm going to be answering your questions from my video, How I Got Over My Engagement. So let's just get into it. Let's go. So these two questions I'm going to answer is one, it was, what was the red flag that gave you the initial thoughts about ending your engagement? And thanks for, thank you for sharing your story. What exactly caused the engagement to end? So, um, let's just say there were red flags in the beginning but I was young and I just literally ignored them like like went right over my little head but what caused the engagement to end and more or less I had a non-negotiable boundary that was communicated laid in the sand planted and it was crossed blown up disintegrated it did it no longer existed and I again that was my non-negotiable so I was really left with no choice but to go if that makes sense it start it, if it makes you question your personal values you gotta go right you gotta go so you know without telling all my business here on the internet why I called the engagement off was a non-negotiable boundary was disintegrated the next question did you discuss did you discuss your decision to end your engagement with anyone before you went through with it? Yes. Three people, three people knew um, that I was considering calling it off. My mom, my sister, and my closest line sister. So yeah, they knew and they helped me arrive at that decision. They left enough room for me to get there on my own while also sharing their, their opinion on the matter. Can you share your daily routine in the first months of healing? So I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the last video, but I stayed in my relationship for a year after said boundary was blown up. So I'm going to answer this question based off when the engagement was officially over, which was January 2018. My daily routine um, was pretty slow. I didn't really do anything. I kind of isolated myself. Three people in my life knew what was going on. So if I did happen to go out, and I was only going out if I had to. So like my best friend was getting married. So if it was something in relation to her wedding, I was going, but I did not socialize. I really didn't hang out with my friends. I got up, I did my morning routine. Like I, I would pray, do my devotionals and ask for strength to get through the day. I would go to work, I'm an educator. So my entire school knew I was engaged. I taught middle school students at the time. They knew I was engaged. So at work, I was putting on a front um, and acting like everything was okay. And if I was triggered by something or upset by something on the internet, honestly, I was going to my car to cry or I was on the phone with my best friend or constantly texting my sister. And after work, I would just go home and write and just kind of hang out with myself. And I was going to therapy. So not too exciting. Um, but that's okay. I let myself feel all the feelings um, I needed to. And yeah, the first few months were pretty slow and isolated. How did you stop crying? So first of all, there's nothing wrong with crying. There's also no time frame. Um, especially as women, we put our, we put this time limit on stuff like I need to be over it in a year I need to stop crying in four months if you want to cry a year later go ahead and cry but how did I stop crying so I think that as you do your work and as you heal there's not a need to cry anymore so in the beginning i was crying because i was devastated i was hurt i was angry as i worked through those feelings the tears just kind of stopped on its own so i think i stopped crying because i started doing my work i started healing from what happened to me but i didn't like in the beginning i cried all the time <laughs> 
but maybe like eight months in I might have cried like once every two weeks or something you know so I think that as you heal the tears will slowly stop falling and before you realize it you can talk about it without crying you can hear his name without crying you can be asked questions without crying so i just want to tell you that as you do your work the tears will slowly stop falling what was the last straw for you so the last straw for me the last straw for me was when i began to change so i was beginning to change because i was so unhappy my peace was non-existent and i didn't even recognize the marche in the mirror i was lashing out at people i was snappy more than usual i was snappy i was agitated all the time i was anxious all the time and when you start spiraling out of control where it affects every aspect of your life you have to look in the mirror and honestly ask yourself is this something i can change and why aren't i changing it so in my situation it was something i could change and i felt as though god was giving me the time i needed to figure it out on my own so the last straw for me was when i lost Marche. i knew i had to go I just want to know how you were able to not relapse after blocking. So I really feel like I was left no choice. I am a true sweet person by nature <laughs> with a spicy side, but honestly, I'm a sweetie and I don't like being mean to people because I don't like people being mean to me. So blocking was really hard for me, like really hard. It was a last resort for me. I was kind of given no other choice because my boundaries were being ignored. My peace wasn't being respected. So when you get pushed to that limit, every time I wanted to unblock him, I was reminded that like my boundaries <laughs> were not respected and my peace was not, this wasn't conducive to my peace. So I didn't relapse because I would remind myself in that moment, like, do you want to let the stress back in or do you want to keep it at bay so i would just say ask yourself like unblocking him is going to do what is it going to aid in your growth or is it going to stunt your growth and we just have to put our big girl pants on and just go put the phone down and go work out or go watch a movie something to stop you from hitting that unblock button do i still talk to any of his family or close friends i do not talk to any of his family i think out of respect i shouldn't um so yeah and his close friends uh we have a lot of mutual acquaintances so yes i i don't talk to them like on an everyday basis but it's no beef like if i text them or if i see them or it's not awkward so yeah i still talk to some of his close friends did i lose any friends in the breakup no i did not um still have all my close friends um i think people might have shifted from like friend to acquaintance but i didn't lose any friends in the breakup no if you saw him again in five years what would you say I would probably ask how his mom is it's <laughs> about it <laughs> what are some things that the relationship taught you I would definitely say how to be strong like how to be the strong one um, how to advocate for what I need and what I expect of someone um, it affirmed that it affirmed my strength in being vulnerable. I'm a very expressive person, very emotional person, and the relationship affirmed that that is in fact a strength. Um, and how to clean, like really clean, like military clean. And this question, 
I told myself that I'm not gonna cry. What's one thing you would say to the old Marche? One thing I would tell the old Marche is that she is strong enough to get through it. I, at the beginning, did not think that I would have been here. I didn't think that I could get through it. And that sounds really bad, but it's so easy to say like, oh, if that happened to me, I would do this, or I don't know how she did that, or I would never, until you're in the situation, right? and you're dealing with that hurt and i think that the past version of me wanted something so bad that i thought was right in front of me and to have that blown up right in front of my eyes i felt like i'm not strong enough to deal with this right now so i'm just not going to deal with it so a large part of my journey pre and post calling off the engagement i just didn't talk about it i didn't say it out loud for months I didn't tell I didn't even tell my family y'all <laughs> I didn't tell my family I told my other best friends one by one like I just had to slowly work out of that space of I'm not strong enough so one thing I would say to old Marche after giving her the biggest hug I would tell her that she's strong enough to do it and to just go ahead and do it and that she will be okay. She'll be better than okay. That's what I would tell old Marche. <laughs> Bars. I hope that answered you guys' questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, subscribe, join us at the mirror. We have a glam time and we get deep over here. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.